Alisa Samuel is trying to be brave. For the first time, the 24-year-old is back to where her friends were brutally slaughtered during Hamas's murderous music festival rampage October 7th. People's bracelets are here. The bracelets from the festival? There's another one here. Four weeks later, fear still scattered in the fields. People's bags, everybody just dropped everything and left. She is struggling. I don't want to walk further. I think Gaza's straight down that way, if I'm not mistaken. Getting this far has been made easier with the help of her cousin, Dr. Shlomo Gensler, one of the first emergency medics sent to the attacks. First casualty was like, I actually think right by the drain point. He too, for the first time since, revisiting the terrors of that day. He was shot in the back of the head, plus a bunch of places in the back of his body. He also had, was, he, had, he was shot, oh, interesting. You can actually see a bullet still. Really? This is actually crazy, wow. Um, there was a ton of shell casings laying all around. Just as we're about to move on. Guys, siren. An incoming rocket warning. Aliza okay. is visibly shaken. Oh, you're, you're okay, all right? You're safe. Come. Come. We'll get in the car and we'll continue going, okay? Bye. So sorry. It's reliving it for you, yeah? I'm really it's, sorry. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. For her, it's extremely traumatizing of because course. Part of where this whole thing, st how it started mm -hmm. with her, was the rocket attack. Was was being at this party in Ray, mm -hmm. and and the rocket attack starting like that, and then hearing this but not knowing what was to come. So for her to go through this again is extremely, extremely uh, scary. It's crazy because it's still very real. Like now that I'm seeing those bullets from the same, mm -hmm. they were never cleaned up, mm -hmm. and that's uh, you know, it, and they. It, still feeling that level of insecurity here. Dr. Gensler. We'd met Dr. Gensler soon after the attacks, still treating patients. Just fine. A month later, he's helping his family heal. Feel it like hitting home. When the, the people that are close to you that you love, you see them struggling and that's very painful. So. I think it's important for me to come back because I think to help me move forward, it's not easy and it's not gonna be easy needs to be done. This is where it started to get even more real. Dr. Gensler too needs some closure. We stop again. More trauma relived. So we had treated a bunch of people, but then there was a few soldiers that came out came out this way. And over here, I, there was one soldier. In fact, look, there's still a, there's still a, a, a medical equipment lying yeah. here. So from, this, from that day. Yes, yeah, so this is definitely from that day, this stuff. So this is see. incredible. Wherever we're going, almost four weeks later, it's not changed that the, everything's still lying around. Yeah. It's surreal. I'll be honest, coming here, I feel a, strong, a, a, re, a real strong emotion because I'm seeing, reliving what I've seen. His colleagues say he is a hero, saved dozens of lives that night. He says he was just doing his job and wishes all the innocent suffering on both sides of the border was over. I really cry about the kids in Gaza that are suffering, that didn't make the choices that some of these operative, these Hamas terrorists did. It bothers me. It tremendously bothers me. And it hurts to know that there are kids that are, you know, that are suffering as a result of it. A few more miles, he gets us to the festival site. Elisa recognizes it immediately. These are the trees that we hid in. We stop. She leads us into the bushes. So this is where you hid? You hid right in there. You're hiding in here? Yeah. Oh my goodness. We saw everything. I saw people just get shot, lined up. Friends of mine. Lined up. They were lined up and they, they were, I saw one of my friends, she was begging for her life. She was 20 years old and she was begging for her life. She asked them to not kill her, to not kill her, to not kill her. And they didn't care, they were laughing. Hiding for almost three hours in absolute fear for their lives. 
my friend, I had to come all the way over here to hold her mouth shut. Like literally to gag her because I couldn't let her make noise. Because you moving. make noise, you're dead. You are killed or taken kidnapped. Hour after hour, witnessing murder after murder after murder. And I saw the Hamas take a bunch of people and went to their commander and asked if to kill them or to take them. And when he said to kill these people and take these people, and they shot them right in the forehead, like right there. And once they were dead, they didn't stop. They just kept shooting them, and you just saw the body just jump and jump from the bullets after they were dead. She is here to help with her recovery, but returning has brought everything flooding back. And sitting here right now, I hear, I hear everything. I hear the screaming, I hear the bikes, and I hear the gunshots. Hearing the gunfire, hearing everything, hearing people crying for their life, to save their life, to give them just a few more days, just to go to see their family again. Eventually, she gets the courage to get a closer look. But look, look how many things there are here. Most everything where it was dropped. Where, where was your tent? Over there. More down there. Yeah, we set up camp Around here. here. Because I remember this, this, this uh, little the white thing. The white one here, you yeah. remember that one? Yeah, <laughs> we always made fun of it. <laughs> At least you knew how to get back to your tent if That's you could exactly see that one. That's exactly why we yes. did it, because we yeah. needed a place to like remember that this is where our thing is. It's right next to there. It's yeah. the first time we see her smile, but it's fleeting. We're going to come out of this stronger, and all the survivors are going to have a story to tell, and they should tell it. And no matter how painful it is, they should tell it, because... This is something that the world needs to know. Nick Robertson, CNN, Raim, Israel.